So you want to buy a Jeep TJ. Well, you've clicked on the right video. I've reached out to the Jeep community and received hundreds of comments on what to look for when purchasing your first Jeep. So let's begin. So everyone will tell you, and they're right, the most important thing to look for when buying your Jeep TJ is to check the frame for rust. You wouldn't build your house on a bad foundation. It's the same with your cars. If your frame's rusty, the Jeep is pretty much worthless. The most important spot to check is what people call the belly pan, as you see right here. It holds up the transfer case. Uh, mine has these spacers right here. Normally those aren't there unless there's a drop like mine has. Normally this pan right here is touching the frame right here and you can't really see if there's rust because of that. Right over here in this little crevice is where your Jeep is most likely to have rust. If it's going to have rust anywhere on the frame it's going to be right there. But you can't always see it. So here's a little trick to check for rust. Right here is a little hole and you can put your finger in there and check for rust. There'll be chunks of it like bark of a tree. And if there's no rust there, chances are the rest of your frame is pristine. Where's the knife? Oh, you're right. So you're going to want to bring a knife with you when checking the frame. You can bring a screwdriver too, just something to poke with. So you're going to open up your knife and you're just going to kind of check around here and hopefully your knife doesn't go through any of it. And if you don't have rust there, like I said earlier, the rest of your Jeep should be fine. So while you're down here looking at the frame, just take a quick look at the body mounts. You can poke your knife up here as well. Make sure these aren't rusted out because this is what actually keeps your cab attached to your frame. And you can imagine what happens when your cab's not attached to your frame and you try driving your Jeep. Now that you've done your knife test and checked the frame to make sure it's solid on the outside, we're going to continue checking the inside of the frame. There's another hole right here in front of the rear tires. Um, you're going to want to put your finger in there. As you can hear, there is some chunks of rust in here. Uh, it's pretty much impossible to find a Jeep that doesn't have some sort of scaling on the inside of the frame. This is a southern car. It still has that issue. Um, unfortunately, the frames weren't engineered well to drain water out. So if you have one that doesn't have any rust in it and you want to keep your frame that way, a lot of people like to drill holes and find little um, ejection ports, more or less, for the water to go out of once you buy your Jeep. So almost just as important as having a good frame is having a good grill on your Jeep. You want your nice seven slots showing, your Nazi killing grill for the world to see. If you happen to go look at a Jeep that has an angry grill on it, even if you don't buy the Jeep, you're gonna wanna remove it for the, for the owner. They're just, they're hideous, right? So you're gonna take that knife from earlier and they're usually just stick on and you'll, you'll peel them off and you'll do the world a favor by doing that. I mean, it's not that bad. Um, excuse me? The angle grill is not that bad. I think it looks kind of cool, honestly. What did you just say? What? It looks kind of good. Mother We're going to continue our talking about rust. This is where the buyer might try to be deceitful or the previous the previous owner, but there's going to be more hidden rust in this section of the video. So when people put bed liner on the outside of their vehicle, a lot of people don't do it to look cool. They do it to hide bad body work, rust, etc. So you're going to want to take a good look at specific areas as well. You're going to want to look right here where you see this rocker panel. Um, if there's diamond plating or some sort of body armor, they might just be trying to hide rust, so you're always going to want to look around it. This is the factory one, it's plastic, so it's not there to hide anything. Um, you're going to see the same thing back here on the back of the tub. You'll see diamond plating, you'll see some sort of body armor, and if it's there, try to look behind it, whatever you can do to check for more rust. 
this is all cosmetic stuff it's not make or break but you want to pay a fair price if there is rust now we're going to work our way back to the front of the vehicle uh, the most important part of the body is of course your traditional seven slotted grill right cameraman yeah all right when it comes to rust inside the cab you're mostly just going to want to look at the floorboards um, water likes to travel down gravity you know stuff like that so pull up the carpet do whatever you can look for a nice clean floorboard like this if it has bed liner on the inside of it they might be trying to hide rust so once again bring out your knife and double check keep an eye out as well for led lights drilled into the body people will just screw them in they won't prep the body right they'll put them right here on the a pillar they'll put them on the hood they're cheap and people like to put them everywhere um, those screw holes will create rust those leds will fail and then when you pull the led out you're gonna have these ugly holes that have rust in them and it's just gonna make the jeep look cheap and kind of devalue it So you probably heard a lot of people say owning a Jeep is a lifestyle. And that's true if it's your daily driver. So before you buy a Jeep, make sure you know what you want it to be used for. Do you want it as a weekend cruiser? Do you want one that's stock and you can drive and get groceries with and just have a fun toot around vehicle? You have to figure those things out. Because when you buy the vehicle, it's gonna be beneficial to buy it set up the way you want it instead of modifying it. So my Jeep here has a very modest lift. It's a two inch suspension lift and a one inch body lift. It allows you to clear tires about 33 inches. This is kind of the in-between lifestyle. So this Jeep could be used for off-road and it's got a little bit extra clearance, but it also hasn't affected the ride quality very much. When you start lifting your vehicles over four inches, that's when a lot of the geometry gets exponentially um, altered and a lot more modifications and money to be put at the Jeep to make it more streetable. There's a couple major changes in the Jeep TJ between its life cycle in 97 and 2006. Um, starting with 97, before the Jeep was even a TJ, it had leaf spring suspension. That's probably what brought you to this TJ, as you heard that it was comfortable. It's because just like in our Avalanche vehicle, coils make these vehicles more comfortable. And this vehicle has front and rear coils. Going over to year 2000, the Jeep finally got rid of its distributor and has a coil unplug setup. This is something that you're going to want to look at if you don't know any good mechanics or um, you don't own a timing light or things like that. Most mechanics nowadays are just parts changers, they're not real mechanics, they're not going to, to work on distributors. So if you just want to get that factor away from your Jeep and make it something more manageable for uh, a new age mechanic to work on, you're going to want something past year 2000. Year 2004, they introduced the Jeep LJ. The LJ has a longer wheelbase by I believe 10 inches. So if you want to have uh, passengers, you want four people in your vehicle or three people in your vehicle, they'll have more leg room. And then finally in 2005 and 2006, Jeep switched from their five-speed manual to their six-speed manual. This manual isn't known for being as reliable. They have issues with that six gear. Um, so you're gonna wanna probably stay in the sweet spot of year 2000 to 2004. This section can apply to buying any vehicle. However, I'm going to um, show you how it looks on the Jeep. So when you're looking at a used vehicle, you really don't know the health of the engine unless you wanna run a compression test. Chances are you're not gonna do that though. So a couple quick things you can do is take off the oil filter cap and you're gonna look at it and you're gonna see if there's any sort of foam on it. If there's foam, that might mean there's coolant in your um, crankcase and you probably have a blown head gasket or something like that. The second thing you're gonna do with that oil cap, you're gonna smell it. If it smells like gas, you have a leaking injector or something else wrong with the intake manifold, um, possibly the valve train, and you're just probably gonna to wanna to back away from that Jeep. We're gonna put this back on. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take off the radiator cap or even just look at the coolant reservoir. Um, right here is the coolant reservoir tank. Um, you're gonna to wanna to make sure it's a nice clear tank. Um, and by clear tank, I don't necessarily mean the plastic is easy to see through, but the water's not murky. So there's two things really to look for. One is a, it's called a milkshake. It's when your oil mixes with your coolant. Once again, head gasket 
or if someone puts some sort of sealer in there, you'll see like these weird brown chunks floating around in there, and right away you'll know there is an issue, someone's trying to hide. The best way to buy a Jeep is to buy it the way you want it already. You're gonna save a lot of money if you wanted a lifted Jeep with expensive wheels and tires on it in the initial purchase. Buyers already know ahead of time they're never gonna get back what they put into their Jeep. So this is where you can really benefit off of their labor, their time, their money. Now, if you just want a Jeep to go cruising in, like I do, I don't like having a doors, I don't like having doors on it or a top on it. Um, that wouldn't stop me from trying to find a Jeep that does. So those parts are worth a lot of money. So you can sell the top, I did, for a thousand dollars. And you're gonna want to take that into account when buying your Jeep. Chances are the seller has already put a lot of money into the Jeep and bought all sorts of fun accessories, winches, trail doors, um, nice bumpers. And if you don't like those things, just keep them in mind because you can sell them off of the Jeep and put on factory things or whatever you want to do and it's going to help offset the cost of the original purchase. If you want the Jeep on some big rubbers, you're going to want to make sure the drivetrain can handle that. You're going to want to look for Dana 44s when it comes to your axles or you're going to want to make sure that your diffs are geared properly. You're going to probably want the six cylinder, no offense to four cylinders, but they just don't have the same get up and go. So if you want a vehicle you can take on the highway, you're going to want the six cylinder. If you're just going around town, you never really want to go over 60, then you can go the four cylinder route. You'll save some good money, but Jeeps tend to have like a $1,500 price difference between the two. So if you're not going to do an engine swap and you're not going to be happy with no power, you're going to want to go with the six cylinders and just be patient and get the right Jeep. Hey everyone, this is Lucas, the cameraman. Thank you very much for watching this video. This was our second video on this channel. So if you have any comments, suggestions, please put it down below. And as always, leave a thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe to the channel to follow us into our next adventures and future vehicles Garfunkel owns. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.